According to St Luke, we share a few things in common with John the Baptist. We were born amid great joy, and as often happens, some people questioned the child's name. Zechariah's insistence that he be named John returned speech to his father's lips. No wonder the people asked, what will this child turn out to be? What proud grandparent doesn't entertain that same thought? And then comes for the first time in Luke's Gospel an intriguing comment. They were all astonished. Years later, when Jesus was no longer a boy, he'd respond to that comment with, Don't be amazed. For the most astonished, astounded and amazed people are people who are easily swayed. They can become an ugly crowd chanting, Crucify him, crucify him. To be astonished is to be wound up by the energy of the crowd. It's evident in the hysteria surrounding the state of origin, with apologies. We can catch glimpses of it at rock concerts, and it's there in political rallies, even at times in Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. Like the people of John's day, we can get carried away by flimsy, though forceful chants. And in the face of this, Jesus says, do not be astonished or astounded. Refuse to be mindless citizens. Broaden rather than narrow your thinking. Do not be astounded. Instead, reflect, ponder. Find alternate ways of reaching and reacting to the energy of the crowd. St Luke notes that John the Baptist lived out in the wilderness until the day he appeared openly to Israel. John probably used this time to reflect, to ponder how to live unaffected by the energy of the crowd. Thus he anticipated something unique in his cousin Jesus. Even nailed to a cross, Jesus is always dying to love us.